How you doing? Thanks for watching. This is George at Wicked Warnings here with a demo install on the Akari drill free mounting platform that we use so often. As you can see, we've got uh, not one, but two brand new Super Duties in here. These both have service body boxes on the back, but doesn't matter if you have a tail, uh, standard tailgate bed or a service bed like this, they'll all fit as long as you can get to the third brake light. Much like this vehicle right here. We're going to be installing our Akari drill-free mounting platform with our 16-inch Wayland Mini LED bar. Just to go over the tools that I use uh, most commonly here, uh, we've got a drill with a Phillips. We've got another drill with a 7mm. Those are to take 7mm to take out your third brake light, and the Phillips is to install and assemble the Akari. You'll also need a small number one Phillips for the dome screws on the light bar. I like to put a fuse, even though this truck has factory auxiliary switches, we're adding a fuse anyways because I believe the factory auxiliary switch is fused at 20 amp, which is an awful lot of power for a simple small light bar. So I put in an additional fuse holder and we drop that down to, I think, 5 or 7 amps for this light bar. I think this light bar would even run on a 3, but I think our typical install is a 5 amp fuse. It's just to better protect the circuit. We really don't want to push more power into the circuit than we need. And I think the light bar draws probably two amps uh, at most. I'll have to double check that and add it to the video footnotes later. We also have wire cutters, wire strippers, standard Super 33 electrical tape, which I can't say enough about. Don't buy the cheap electrical tape if you want your installs to go easier. This stuff right here is called Super 33 Plus. A little hard to see right there. You go. That is the installer's choice in tape. If you've never used it, buy a couple of rolls. About $4 a roll, but absolutely worth the money 7 16 wrench down on the table there as well as the 7 16 ratcheting wrench if you prefer the adjustment of the ratcheting wrench you can use that let me show you a little bit closer on how the akari is set up first thing we do is we set up the top hat with our light and as you can see here we mount the light in the corners right here i have another video showing this with some simple self-tapping screws so this is the top hat of the mount, and we also drill through the factory wiring hole right here. You can see we've drilled through. We add a grommet, a little plastic grommet on the bottom so we don't have any metal sharp edges. That's to allow the wiring to pass through. And before we mount this light down, we put some sealant all around the bottom of that hole to seal it up. And we also put a little ring of sealant around each of these screws and a stripe of sealant right here just to help glue this down to the platform and keep any water from being able to get under the edge here and into the hole. So a ring of sealant around all of the holes and a little stripe here just for extra protection. You could put a stripe of sealant through here if you'd like to as well, totally up to you. That's how the mount, use a very short screw because if your screws stick out too long, they will impede the way that the mount comes together. This is what you should end up with. Feel free to add your Wicked Warning sticker on the lip so when it's on the back of the truck you can see it. The other portion of the mount is right here. You will be assembling the end caps. They simply screw on very easily with that Allen head, eighth inch Allen head right there. It's a very easy, simple install. Let's see if I can turn the light on for you. There you go. So there's an Allen head key screw right there. And that assembles the side panels. Make sure when you put it together that you're in the lip here. This plastic slides into a lip here. And it also under here, you'll see it slides into a lip as well. You can't see it now because the foam is in the way, but it's, it's underneath there that it slides into a lip here, kind of in the corner also. Once you install that, you simply put the stripes of foam here and here and on the edges, and then you'll install the brackets just like this. They bolt in from in here. See that bolt down in there, right there? That's your 7 16 bolt. And the bracket must always stay locked in here. You'll see on the truck, you can pull it apart and peek in. Because once in a while, when you mount it in the truck, this will come out and end up down there like that. 
or mostly down there like that. And you don't want to install like that. You want to make sure it's all the way in the lock like that when you're tightening it. See this tightening action? Essentially, this pad is going to slide into the third brake light and go under the factory roof. And these pads here go on top of the factory roof. And as you tighten the bolt, see, this is what squishes against the factory roof and locks the mount into your truck, just like that. So you can see how critical it is that that hinge point is in there correctly. So as you're snugging it up, pull it away from the truck a little bit. Like if it was on the truck like this, you would peek it out a little bit and make sure that down here in the corner that you're mounted upright and you're not crooked like that or something. It needs to be locked in. So that's how you assemble the lower part of the mount. You'll be able to tighten those bolts from here or from here, whatever you prefer. And then your factory third brake light will mount here, right onto the mount, just like it mounts on the truck. See, it's exactly the same shape. So, step one at this point, I believe is going to take some of our parts. So, I didn't discuss the wire. Up to you if you would prefer to use 18.2 or 18.3. You're going to need about 25 feet of it to go from a third brake light to the auxiliary switches on a standard Super Duty. I'm using 18.2 as I kick the camera. As you can see here, just to aid to get the wiring under the headliner, we have a zip strip here, a nice long one. We tied two very large zip strips together, and that gives us a nice chase tool to push from the third brake light underneath the headliner and out the driver's side door area being very careful not to involve the airbag go up and over the airbag so we don't impede any airbag deployment we absolutely do not want to wire around an airbag if you use an 18.3 then you can adjust the pattern on the light bar this particular client doesn't want to adjust the pattern no need to run an extra wire i am using an 18-2 18 gauge is the minimum that I would recommend for 25 feet or less on this light bar. If your runs are over 25 feet, then I would recommend stepping up to a 16 gauge feed wire. And, uh, and the longer the run, use the American wire gauge chart, figure it out. It's not that hard, but, uh, don't try to run this off of a 22 gauge at 50 feet or anything like that. There's a lot of LEDs in the bar needs a little bit more power than that. So what we're going to do now. Let's go into the truck. I'll raise the camera. I'm going to show you how we disassemble the truck and how we get our wiring through. So back here at the door jam of the truck, whether it be a four door, two door or cabin and a half like this, we want to loosen up the rubber molding around the door, but we want to be very careful when we do that. We don't want to be kinking that rubber molding or uh, changing the shape of the radius curves. The corners are the most sensitive part of the rubber molding. So when we remove it, we like to start in the flat area like this and remove it by straight pulling it out nice and gentle and then try to pull the curve straight down and not really screw that curve up see how I'm trying to not distort that as much as we can and then just lay it right like that there's a metal in here that you really don't want to screw with and mess up the shape so you try to make this just as nice as you can and keep that shape without letting it flop or bend or any of that stuff. And what that's going to do is it's going to expose this area up in here. And here you can see that airbag. This is the airbag, the side curtain airbag. You want your wiring to come in over that, not under that. Because if you put your wiring under it and you wrap that wiring around the side curtain airbag, you may have a deployment issue. So we need to take that wiring over the top of the airbag and down the side here and the wiring is going to go down the side and across the floor forward through the firewall but once again be careful of this airbag this is the number one point that people like to wrap the wire around and we don't want to have any issues like that this is where that fish tape is going to come out and it's helpful to have two people but when you're in the bed you can shove the fish tape this way and it will be coming out hopefully right down here a lot of times it pokes out right down here and you can run it straight down and not even get involved in the in the side curtain airbags up here this is your sensitive area where you don't want to be running a lot of wiring and such like that let me go up in the bed and show you what i mean so back here up on the roof, you can see the original cargo light is working just fine. We won't lose any functionality with that. Step one is going to be remove the OEM cargo light with your seven millimeter socket, just like that. And if you reach in right down here 
you'll see, and I'll show you, there's a little connector here, and if you push that down, you may be able to reach the connector to disconnect this. If you can't reach that connector, then you just simply pull out the wiring and fish it through the mount. Let me see if, if this truck will play nice. Okay, so as you can see, uh, Ford has changed the design on the newer trucks, and you can no longer get to the connector. Uh, so if your black plug is here, you won't be able to reach it to disconnect it. If you have a couple plugs in these two holes, you can push them down and the connector will slide out and you can just simply disconnect it. Ford's uh, geniuses decided to move the connector from here to here and now you cannot get any slack whatsoever to remove it and unplug it. So we'll just disconnect it instead. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward to just pull the light bulbs out and leave the wiring hanging. And we will then fish it through the Akari mount so we can reinstall the factory third brake light onto said light bulbs after. See this hole right here? That hole right there? See the headliner underneath it when you put your finger in there and you push down? That's where we want to fish our wire. In that hole, straight that way. And then it'll come out by the door. That's the secret spot. Right through that hole, above the headliner, and out down, hopefully straight down here and down to the kick panel where I showed you earlier. As you can see, we now have our wire through and it is of course coming out inside the vehicle over here. So we'll get that out of our way. And that is how you run the powering wire. Now let's go ahead and install the lower base mount next. Now remember what I said about setting these brackets. Don't let them get crooked like that. Make sure that they're set in correctly oriented make sure your foams are all tucked in see how this corners out see that that could be an issue it could be a leak right there in that corner you can zoom in see that that's no good that's what you're going to want to look for because we want to take that foam and we want to get it tucked in like that okay so check your foams make sure everything is very good as far as how it's mounted and then you can install this these brackets right here they're gonna slide under here and here so personally myself I like to take the wiring before I do this and I like to move it to the center and burn my palm with the hot light bulb while I do that you can also pull the light bulbs out for the time being so they don't end up burning your hands like I just did. But by moving the wiring to the center, you're freeing up this area for the brackets. So don't don't leave the wiring in the right side there. It just gets in the way of the bracket. Just move it to the center for now. And then we're going to want to slide this mount up on the roof. The first thing you're going to notice is this big thick rubber gasket here. Okay, this rubber gasket here needs some compression. It needs to be squished a little. So when you're putting this up on the roof, you're going to need to kind of push flat and really get it on the roof until this area here contours the roof. So you're going to be looking here to make sure that you're seated all the way into the roof and that you will end up squishing this rubber flap right here down. You'll squish that so that that's okay. But you want a good, solid, clean seal all through here between here and the roof. You don't want gaps here. You don't want gaps here. So like I said, you'll end up pushing this up. Real quick before I forget, bring your wiring through this hole here and it will then come out right here. I mean, kind of duh, right? I just wanted to tell you. This is what I mean about the seal. You can't really tell, but this isn't tight yet. Let's see how that's not squished. Let's see how when we bring it forward, we squish it in and we get rid of that gap nice and tight. We want a nice tight seal all the way around this. That's what we're going for. So let me tighten it up and see if I can accomplish that. Now, just to let you know, if yours is fighting you a little bit, sometimes, now that it's pretty much snugged and I've peeked in the sides here and I've made sure that the brackets are still locked in, I've pulled this aside and peeked in there and made sure, sometimes I even have to put my hand here and squish down and give it a thump right here and see how it moved forward. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to push down on the top right here and here and really give these things a good thump forward like that. And at the same time, holding them tight with my left hand, I'll be tightening up the bolts with my right to really get that seal tight against the roof. 
So don't be afraid to give it a little thump. If you want to grab a rubber mallet, that works too. Don't beat the crap out of it and dent your roof though. All right, so I've got it nice and tight. I use my handy dandy 716 ratcheting wrench with a flexible head. And as far as tightness goes, I'm sure Akari has a specification for this in the directions, but it is a 716 bolt. It's small. Don't break it. It's only going in aluminum. So, uh, you know, I would say a little bit snugger than, say, a spark plug on a small block V8. Uh, but uh, again, check your spec with Akari. Next step is we've pulled our power wire for our light bar out one of the top slots here to allow it to go up into the top hat and power the light bar. We've also put our light bulbs back out the passenger side oval here and put the lights back together for to shut off the light finally so it'll stop burning me uh, and we've uh, we put it out the right side so it's easier to wire because when these lights wire into the third brake light from the factory they start here and go across and go across so bring it out the third one and it'll go right back together just like it was factory and it'll go right back on the thing just like it was factory so now that our wire is up here we'll be able to mount our top hat next and then connect the wire so the way the top hat mounts is there's a lip in the front here. You need to hook that lip right here on this. There's also two screws in the back right here and over here. And those screws will screw in right here into these pre-drilled holes. So we also, when we mount the top hat, we want to pull the wire for the power of the light bar through here. So we'll go ahead, pull our wire right in the hole. Pull it up through there. Make sure our top hat is centered with our foam in here and here, because we have our foam gaskets on our top hat here to seal right through here. So make sure that that's all centered up and looking correct. And then we'll bring our top hat down after we hook in the edges, just like so. And you may have to shift the top hat left or right a little bit for the screw that goes underneath here to line up with the hole. There's a hole in the top hat, there's a hole down here as well, and that's gonna be the Phillips stainless steel screws that are included with the Akari mount. These Phillips stainless steel are what's gonna come in like this. And I find it easier to put them in before the light is on because there's a little bit more room underneath here. You can see under there where the stainless Phillips go in, right there and right there. And you can see how our wire is going in there. It's basically coming out the top. We're going to do our connection there and then put the dome back on the light bar. We're going to put the third brake light back on the truck. Be very careful. These screws will strip out. Use a hand driver when you put this back in because this is just thin ABS plastic. So these screws, be extremely cautious. Don't strip them out. Hand drive them till they're snug and that's it. So number one thing people do is drill drive those in, strip out the plastic, and then we got to get them a new mount. All right, we're all connected. And just a small note, when you reattach your dome, there's a gasket here. Make sure this gasket stays intact in the rubber groove, in the groove here, this rubber gasket. Make sure when you put your dome on that you feel the edge here and you feel the edge here and here and make sure it's centered. Sometimes you put the dome on and you feel a nice lip here and you feel it's it's short here. So you might have to just give it a little thump this way to center it up. These are the clips that the dome is held on with. And the way they go is they snap and slide and then the screw goes in. So to remove them, first thing is the screw comes out, then the, the clip slides down and then comes off. Okay, again, snap, slide, slide, snap. That's how they remove. If you try any other way, you'll probably just break the clip. One other small note on the clip. As you can see, there is a top and a bottom to the screw. The large hole is the top. The bottom hole is where the threads go. So put these on with the large hole up so the screw fits in correctly. And here's a live demo of how the clip goes on. Now I'm down. I'll center up the bar a little bit. Put it on the bottom first. I snap it in place and I slide it down till it stops and locks. That's exactly how these clips work. Same way on the other side, just off center. You put it on the bottom first, snap on the top and slide it down, locking it into place. Then put your screws back in to place on each side. As you can see, we're all back together now. We've got the factory brake light reinstalled. We're tight on everything. We've checked it, we've jerked on it, moved it, tried to tear it off the truck. It's not coming off. We're good to go. Now we can move on to the wiring. So as I said, we're going to run this wiring down here. 
We're going to run it across into here and we're going to bring it up underneath the dashboard right here. And where we're going to go through is that factory boot right there. It's two layers of rubber. Be very careful. The inside is completely full of wires. So there is a tool. It's uh, called a wire insertion tool that we use. I like to slice the inner boot, open it up and visually verify that there's nothing in there and then pierce the outer boot with the wire insertion tool. This, uh, you could also drill a hole through the firewall if you prefer, um, you know, probably somewhere in the area of here, you could drill right through, but we go through the factory boot. We do not under any circumstances ever push the boot and try to ram through the edge here. Cause that is sharp stainless, sharp steel right there. Not stainless, but sharp aluminum. So don't ever allow anybody to shove one of these boots over and try to ram your wiring in the edge like that. Cause that is just horribly wrong. All right, under the hood here, you can see how we've pierced that outer wall uh, next to the wire loom. And our wire is now out here into the engine compartment where we are going to hook it up to the factory auxiliary switches, which are mounted right here. And if you have a diesel, they're buried by a bunch of other crap over here. But here is the wiring you're gonna to wanna to get to. It's down, kind of stuck to the side of the auxiliary switches here. And most of the time, it's zip tied and has this fancy dancy label that'll tell you exactly what every one of these switches does. And as you can see, somebody's already hacked in something for switched here. And this is actually the box light power uh, smart guy used a fuse like I do. Uh, that way we're not just feeding 40 amps into some box lights. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and use output six so we can move the fuse here and allow it to work without the key. That way his light will work with or without the key. So we'll be going for the gray and orange relay six output wire. And we'll be connecting to that and we'll connect our factory ground right there. If you notice, there's a nice factory ground right there. Very close and convenient. What do you know about that? Very convenient. Use that ground, use that power, connect your stuff up. Alrighty, so we're all hooked up here. We've got our ground, we've got our fuse, we put our 5 amp in here. We're running to the fattest, most heaviest feed, which 5 and 6 are just uh, fat by factory that way. We've also switched the fuse over one location, which is super easy. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not, but down in here, that fuse right there, if you move it over one location, 5 and 6 become active with battery instead of key only. So we do that for our customer here who wants his mini bar to be able to be active with the battery. Like I said, I've got a five amp fuse right here. We've tucked it all up real nicely. And the end result, as you can see back here, is of course a nice, powerful alternating light bar. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I hope you're putting something like this on your own truck. And by the way, an 11 inch will fit up there. A 23 inch will also fit up there. You just need to drill it slightly differently. So thanks again for watching Wicked Warnings, your number one source for construction and safety strobe lighting and equipment. And I hope this drill-free Akari mount installation video was helpful.